So I'm going to start out with the IK constraint, which is going to be placed on this second arm. And the target is going to be the control bone here. So to do that, we select our target first, then the bone that we want to add the constraint to. Shift I to add an IK, or we could do control shift C, but and then choose inverse kinematics, but shift I is, works fine. And now we need to set up our um, constraint properly because I'll just turn on my relationship lines. You can see that this IK is running all the way down here to our root. And if I move this, oh, it's not going to work. Why? And that is because the control is also a child of the root. So the IK can't figure it out. I can't solve that because it's part of the same hierarchy. We need to change our settings here. So let's go chain length. We want that to be two, so it only goes to there. Let's grab this. That is looking good. Uh, now with this, we don't want to enable stretching because it's a mechanical rig. So that's just one thing that we need to be wary of when we animate it. We just can't go too far. Let's check it out. We move it over here. You notice that our elbow is not really uh, twisting and, and behaving properly. But if we rotate this guy on the Z axis, the world Z axis, so uh, Z, you notice that it controls our elbow. It keeps our elbow pointing in the right direction. So to get this to point towards our target but not aim up that direction, what constraint do we use? I'll give you five seconds of thinking music. Do, 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 do. Yes, we use a locked track constraint. So I'm going to select uh, this guy here. It's going to be our target. Then choose this one, Control shift c and choose locked track. And always remember to look at the icon. You go, aha, that's what it does. It works like a compass. And that's what we want. Although as soon as I add it, it's broken everything. And that is because we need to set this up correctly. So I just disable it and have a look at our axes. So our positive Y is pointing this way. So we actually want it to track towards the negative Y. So let's just choose negative Y. And we want it to, um, what's the axis that we want it to spin around? The one pointing up. So we want it to spin around the Z axis, which is already um, enabled here. So let's um, now unmute it and see if that's figured it out. Yes, it has solved, solved our problem. So you can see, yep, it is just spinning and keeping our elbow pointing in line with our target here. So that's taken care of that. Now the next thing is going to be the action constraint, which is controlled by, by this one here when we move it to the left and the right. Now we don't actually add the action constraint on this control. We need to add the action constraint on all of the bones that we want to move when we control this one. So that is our clamp bones down here but I will add a limit location to this one so that it stops, it can't go past the start and the end. So let's just choose our constraint from down here. Limit location. And I only want to limit the X axis, the local X. Let's change it to local. Let's choose a minimum and a maximum of 1.5. So it's only going to go from its local zero and then 1.5 in, the, um, in the positive X direction, which is this way. But I don't want the animator to translate past 1.5. So to help with that, we can enable the effect transforms. And let me reset this. Now when I grab it, um, it can't go past 1.5 on the x-axis. And we actually also want to lock it on each of the other axes. We don't want it to scale. No, we don't want it to rotate. But I will change it to Euler. Just so it looks neater. That looks neater to me. And we only want it to move on this one. So let's just lock those. Now when we grab it and move it around, the animator can only move it in the direction that you desire. So that is taken care of that. So the next thing I'm going to do is actually animate the closing of this clamp and then hook it up to an action constraint on this, uh, for this bone here. Now, before I do any animation, I want to make sure that I've got all my bone orientations correct and I'm going to lock the channels that we don't want to use. So I'll, I'll select all our clamp bones here and I don't want the animator to be able to, to grab and move them around. So I'm going to hold down Alt and just drag here so that I've locked all of the locations for all of these bones. And we don't want them to scale either. So I'm going to do the same thing for scale. And because we're only working on one axis to animate this, I don't want it to be quaternion. because That's too much. I, I'm just going to choose Euler XYZ. And I held down Alt and that um, has changed all of them. Okay, so now it's always nice when you have only one axis to work with, that it, the main movement moves in the positive X direction. But you can see that the main movement here should work in the negative Z direction. So I'm actually going to change the orientation of my bones 
so that the positive x is working in the closed direction. It's always a nicer thing for the animators. So we're going to jump into edit mode and reorient these bones. So I'm going to try, select all of these guys, let recalculate the roll, so shift N, and then choose positive uh, global X. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try local X. Let's try that again. I don't know why it didn't work then, but control N, local X, and that has pointed um, the X axis up. Now when we move it, it's in the wrong direction, so we need it to be X axis down. That's okay, let's uh, select these guys, jump into edit mode, shift N, and then choose local X tangent down. Jump back into pose mode, and now when we move it, yes, this is what I want. So the positive X is, is a closed direction. Now I've only done the one side, so if I move it on that side, it's in the wrong direction. So what I'm gonna do is select these guys, and then hit W, symmetrize. And this one has the X axis pointing up, so that when we rotate it in the positive direction, it is closing. So that is all working. We can lock our channels that we don't want the animator to use now. So let's select them all and hold down Alt and lock the Y, hold down Alt and lock the Z. So now all of these bones can only be animated on the X axis. Excellent. So let's do some animation, really simple, and we will turn this into a, an action. So I'm just going to split my window, vertical split, bang, change this one to be the dope sheet, and then change the dope sheet over to the action editor. So for this action, I'm going to select our four controls here, then hit I to insert a keyframe and choose rotation. And you notice that it's also keyed these locked channels. I will delete those in, in a second. Our next keyframe, I'm going to go to 10 frames later, so frame 11. And I'm going to jump to the top view for this. I'm going to grab our clamp one here and close it just slightly. So let's just go 10 degrees. 10 degrees, make sure I key that. So I'm going to hover over here and push I. Actually, let me undo that. I'm actually going to do both at the same time by enabling this X mirror. So when I rotate this and then type in 10 degrees, it's going to do the other side as well. Oh, but I make, need to make sure that I'm, I key that frame that. So I'm going to hit I. Choose rotation. That has done the first little section there. Oh, it didn't do that side. Uh, let's just fix it manually. Type in 10. There we go. Hit I, rotation. So now from frame 1 to frame 11, it's closing slightly. I want to keyframe these two here as well. So let's just go I, choose rotation. So they're not moving in that first bit. But then in the second part of the animation, so I'm going to frame 21. I'm going to rotate this, and let's go, let's go 85 degrees is a nice number. So I'm going to hit I over here, select this one, hit I. That's my animation. Okay, I'm just going to turn off the names of the bones because they are getting in my way now. So viewport display, turn off the names, and I'll turn off the axes because we're we're totally done with that. Okay, so that's our close animation. And we are going to name this action up here. So uh, crane rig action, we're going to call this crane arm open close. That's the name of the action. And I'm also going to give it a fake user. So click this one so that if it's not being used, it doesn't get deleted from the file. So that way it's always going to be saved in there and I know it's safe. That is good. Now I can also clear this, all right? So it's no longer connected to our rig. So when we scrub, the animation is not going to be playing. Oh, actually, before we do that, I want to delete the um, unnecessary um, keyframes. I'm going to do that in the, um, the graph editor. So I'm going to select all of these bones that I wanted to animate, and I only want to keep the, um, oops, I only want to uh, keep the X axis, and I can delete all the other ones. And now I can push X and delete those ones. So now I've got a nice clean animation. Now let's jump back to the action editor and make sure, yep, we're in the action editor. I can now disconnect it from our um, object here. But I, I want you to pay attention to what is the start frame, frame one, what is the end frame, frame 21, okay? Oh, and also make sure that you um, go to frame one before you click this. Otherwise, if you don't do that, then you're gonna be halfway through your animation when you've cleared it, and it's just gonna be stuck like that. 
But if you did happen to do that, just make sure you have those bones selected and then clear the rotation with Alt R. So there we go. I've now reset my rig back to default state. And let's connect this to our um, control up here. So this is going to be our target. So we select that one first. And then we select this guy here, which is going to be the owner. Control Shift C and then choose action. And let's jump over to the constraints tab. And here you can see our action constraint. Now it's red because it's not set up correctly. But here is our uh, target. So it's the crane arm rig. And the bone that we're targeting is the close bone, which is up here. Now let's have a look at the actual target. This might be um, collapsed for you. So you just open it up like that. We want the target to work on the X location. So that is moving left and right. Not in world space, but at its own local space. The minimum, we want it to be at zero. And the maximum, we want it to be 1.5. When it moves at 1.5, it's going to play the animation. And we need to tell it what action. Now we click in here, and you can see this is the action that we just created. This is our animation. Now the little F stands for fake user, which means it's always going to be saved with the file. So choose that. And then we need to tell it the start frame and the end frame. So we want it to start with frame 1 and end with frame 21. Now if I grab this and move it in the X axis, it should play our animation. And it does. But it's only playing it for that particular bone. And we can just copy this. So let's shift select all these guys and select this guy last so that when we go pose, constraints, copy constraints to selected bones, it's going to copy uh, those settings over to this bone. And if we hit G and move it around, you can see da, 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 it's playing that full animation. Time to save our work and make everything look beautiful.